And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to talk to you about heavy metal toxicity and its association with candida. So it's normal to find some heavy metals in the body, and there are actually some heavy metals that promote good health, and these would be ones, of course, like iron and zinc, while others, like arsenic, lead, mercury, and cadmium, are extremely toxic and can cause or contribute to countless health problems. The problem with toxic heavy metals begins when they accumulate in the body to a point where they promote damage. The body is not designed to hold on to excessive amounts of these heavy metals and in many cases can't effectively eliminate these toxic metals entirely on its own. So what this means is that without specific heavy metal detox, these toxic metals often stay in the body and continue to create problems. Heavy metal toxicity has become very common due to a frequent usage of heavy metals in our daily life, and this can be anything from cookware, environmental pollution, or even medical procedures that use toxic metals like mercury. So what do these toxic heavy metals do to us? Typically, they disrupt normal cellular function, and this can cause a wide array of issues and symptoms. And some of these can manifest as things like memory loss, speech, hearing, or vision issues, inability to concentrate or brain fog, loss of coordination, digestive problems, chronic inflammation and pain, chronic fatigue, and even candida and yeast infections. If you have some of these toxic metal symptoms, especially if you have several of these toxic metal symptoms all at once, you very possibly have heavy metal toxicity. So what is the connection between heavy metal toxicity and candida overgrowth? Toxic heavy metals certainly disrupt your gut bacteria. In a healthy state, the good bacteria in the gut limits candida from overgrowth. So with less good bacteria, the candida, being an opportunistic organism, becomes a more aggressive fungal form that spreads and releases over 80 different toxins. These toxins can accumulate anywhere in the body, suppress the immune system, and cause a wide variety of health issues and also yeast infections. So there is some evidence suggesting that candida and other yeasts can actually bind to certain toxic heavy metals and prevent them from entering the bloodstream. This ability of candida actually protects the body, but it may also cause the candida to grow excessively, which of course would lead to a yeast infection. So essentially, heavy metal toxicity can prevent the body from healing candida overgrowth, and in many cases it can make an already existing yeast infection far worse. So if you have candida and also suspect that you have heavy metal toxicity, you really should treat them both. And this might be one reason why candida is so stubborn and so persistent and why for so many years, so many people have had problems treating their candida and eradicating it because they're just treating the candida and they're not treating the heavy metal toxicity, which is fueling the candida. If you can treat the heavy metal toxicity, then the candida overgrowth would likely become much easier to manage. This seems to be very common in people who have mercury fillings in their teeth or even a known exposure to mercury. So one important thing to keep in mind when dealing with heavy metal toxicity is that certain heavy metals are extremely toxic. And if they're released into the circulation too quickly during the treatment, your body may not be able to effectively remove all of them. So when this happens, the levels of toxins in the bloodstream may increase dramatically, which can lead to many side effects, serious health issues, and even significant damage to your internal organs. So what can you do about heavy metal toxicity? The blue-green algae chlorella is exceptional at chelating with heavy metals. It also gives you a nice boost of energy, so it's something you can really take in the morning. But one of my favorite ways to deal with heavy metal toxicity, and it's something I take at least three times a week because I eat a lot of fish and seafood, is something called modified citrus pectin. And what it means to be modified is unlike a traditional pectin, which is the fiber of citrus fruits primarily, that would ordinarily be passed through the intestines, what it means to be modified is this particular pectin is a much smaller particle size that allows it to pass easily through the intestinal barrier and work systemically throughout the bloodstream where it actually binds to and facilitates excretion of 
excessive levels of everyday exposure to heavy metals. And this can also include particularly problematic metals like lead, cadmium, arsenic, and of course mercury. If you are going to take modified citrus pectin, one thing you should know about it is that it's so comprehensive and indiscriminate as far as what it pulls out of you that you don't want to take it within two hours of taking any supplements or medication because it'll actually remove those from you too. So if you're going to take it, try taking the modified citrus pectin at nighttime just before bed. It comes in either capsules or powder, and I like to do the powder. I mix it in hot water and uh, let it sit for about 20 minutes, and that actually helps to activate it if you let it sit like that and then just drink it. It has kind of like a slightly salty, almost creamy taste to it. So it's actually not that bad. And then I just let it work throughout the night. And one thing I noticed the next day is, is if I can think with better clarity, so it really helps with brain fog. The modified citrus pectin plus chlorella taken at different times throughout the day. These are two things that really help to support your body's natural reduction of heavy metals. And there's things that you can take that will really help you live in this super toxic world that we all have to live with today. And the great thing about modified citrus pectin, if you do choose to take it, is that it is safe enough for use every day and you can use it upwards of three times each day if you like for advanced therapeutic use or just once a day for general maintenance. And I bet if you start doing this, then you'll likely find it's much easier to eradicate and effectively limit your levels of candida. But as always, when dealing with candida, no matter how you're treating it, you need to be patient and persistent. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.